most people are using EQ wrong. And unfortunately, most people teaching how to use EQ online are giving really bad advice. So in today's video, what I wanna do is share three things that you need to understand about using EQ, one of which goes directly against the way most people teach how to use EQ. Let's get straight into it. Okay, without a doubt, the number one question I get about EQ is how big or small should my boosts or cuts be? And in short, the answer is, of course, it depends, but there are actually some rules that you should be paying attention to with this. And when I say how big, I mean both how tall, how much volume am I adding or taking away, and how wide. So how much width of the frequency spectrum am I boosting or cutting? Now, as I said, there's some rules, but more importantly, there's just some general concepts that make sense that are fairly easy to apply. So even if this is fairly new to you, you can conceptually apply them based on what you're hearing. Trust your ears, trust your judgment. But let's start with the number one rule with boosts and cuts. And that's that you don't wanna do really narrow boosts. So a boost like this is going to sound weird. Listen to how weird this sounds. I'll kind of move it around so you can hear it. Right? Kind of sounds bad. If it sounds bad at an extreme level, it's going to sound bad at a lower level. It's just going to sound quiet or bad. It's still bad. So instead of that, when you're doing your boosts, you want them to be at least kind of medium. That's going to be a little bit more musical, a little less weird and obvious. And so just keep that in mind. Now, in terms of how big they should be, what we need to be thinking about is what frequencies do we want to be affecting and how much do we want to bring them out or reduce them in the mix? So for example, let's say we just want this guitar to cut through in the mix a little bit more, where I'm going to use a little bit of the brighter frequencies to help them cut through so my ears can pick them up a little bit better. So I'm going to be doing boost somewhere up here and I want it to be a little bit broader and I just want to find the range in the context of the mix that helps it cut through with everything else going on so this song doesn't currently have drums in it just yet I'm actually currently working on recording those but just to give you an idea here it's fine where does that sound the best reduce the frequency down and then just scale it up in terms of volume to get it to where it's giving you enough presence in the context of the mix. So I think around here sounds nice. Somewhere around there, take that away. With it in, the guitar just cuts through a little bit more. So how much volume is totally context depending on what you want that source to do. Now, this is a fairly broad boost. So I am capturing some of that mid-rangey stuff all the way into the upper mids presence range. That's totally fine. If I didn't want to get into something, like let's say it was a little bit harsh right around... 3k here then there's two ways that you could address it either have this broad boost and add a cut right around that range that is a little bit funky to you totally fine or you just narrow up how wide your boost is so in this case i might shift it down just a little bit to get it away from that 3k and just make it a little bit narrower so trust your ears if you don't like the way it's sounding right around this 3k try to figure out how to make your eq move either narrower or address that issue separately okay now when it comes to cuts there's two different types of cuts that you could be making the first is a tonal cut similar to what we just did with the boost let's say you just felt like this guitar was a little bit muddy you just want to cut a little bit of that mud out in this case, a broad, medium to broad EQ move is probably going to be best. If you need it to be really deep, that's fine. If you don't need it to be really deep, that's fine too. How much volume you're taking away is totally dependent on what you're trying to do with that sound. But the broadness of it really just depends on what frequencies you want to be affecting. So if I don't want to get up too much into this mid-range here, then I either want to shift this down or I want to make this cut just a little bit narrower, right? And then the second type of EQ cut that you might be doing is what's called a notch filter. And that's to address a specific resonance. This guitar doesn't really have any resonances, but depending on the source in the room, the mic the guitar, all that stuff, you can get these like little rings that happen and they'll be pretty obvious to you. You'll hear them. If they're not irking you, then they're probably fine. You don't need to worry about it. I think a lot of people overemphasize notch filtering and resonances and stuff. But if you are hearing it and you want to address it, the way to do that is to find where you hear it the most, narrow in on just that frequency. Let's just pretend like it's this frequency, even though we don't really hear one and then just cut just at that frequency as narrow as you can where it is addressing the issue and as much as you need to, to get it to sound the way that you want. 
Okay, now in that little example, I got into the second thing that you need to know about using EQ, and that is that sweeping to find frequencies isn't wrong, but the way most people teach you to do it is wrong. You should never, ever, ever, ever sweep like this. because everything sounds weird when you sweep with a tight boost. Instead, what you should be doing, first of all, is try to identify the frequency range that you want to be addressing. And so what I mean by that is our EQ is really broken out into six sections. We have sub frequencies way down here. We have bass frequencies, low mids, mid range, upper mids, and then bright frequencies. Each of these ranges sound completely different. So if I'm looking for something presence oriented, like where it's gonna really cut through in the mix, then what I'm looking for is gonna be somewhere up here where our ears are actually sensitive to that. I'm not gonna be looking for something way down here that's kind of just boomy low end, that's great on kick drum if you want that big thuddy, feel it in your chest kind of kick drum, but you don't shouldn't be sweeping the whole frequency spectrum. You should kind of zoom in into roughly the area that you need to be focusing. Now, I put together a completely free six step checklist to a pro mix that goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have, and on it has a little EQ cheat sheet guide that goes through those six frequency zones, gives you descriptor words so that if you're hearing something, you can kind of go to the right range to address that if you want to boost it or cut it. It's completely free from the description below, so be sure to pick it up. It's really gonna help you out. Let's go and talk a little bit more about how to sweep appropriately. So start in the range that you want to address. So as you saw earlier, when I was trying to add a little bit of presence to this guitar, I wasn't sweeping down here. I was sweeping just in this kind of range right here. So just two to three of the frequency zones should be all that you're sweeping in to find what you're looking for. And you're just listening for, if you're trying to boost, what sounds the best to, my, to your ears, right? And usually you want to do this in the context of the mix. And find what sounds best to you with everything else going on in the context of the mix. Now, if you're looking for a problem that's slightly different, what you want to do then is boost Typically, if I'm searching for a problem, I will do it in solo, and I'll boost with a broad cut. Let's say we felt like that frequency range right there, that right around 3K thing, this right here, was kind of hurting our ears. This guitar is fairly balanced, but some guitars it's really, really uh, jarring between two and 3K. So what you want to do is find basically the range, the broad range where it's the worst, you want to try to zero in at a broad level as much as you can. Then you want to start to narrow in and make sure that you're isolating that frequency. So let's say just the same example here. So right around here is kind of the harshest. So I'm going to now narrow and just see where is it the absolute worst. To me, it's right here. So I might go and do a little bit of a cut right there to just address that harshness. And again, maybe a little wider to capture a little bit more of those frequencies if that's what I'm trying to address in a cut, or a little bit narrow if I'm really trying to notch something super specific out. Okay, the final thing that you need to understand about using EQ is that it does not matter if you boost or cut, at least with most standard EQs. If you're using a uh, vintage style EQ, there are some subtle differences to those EQs, but for the most part, boosting and cutting doesn't actually matter. They're doing the same thing. Here are two EQs. They look exactly the same, right? <laughs> but in one case, if we look at this top example, I'm actually doing a boost here and then just volume balancing it down. On this one, I'm just cutting some of the high and the low. If I were to put the volume output back to zero on both of these, these look like very different EQ moves, but functionally they're doing, as we just saw, the exact same thing. With this one, I'm adding some presence by functionally rolling off the high end and the low end. In this case, I'm adding some presence by rolling off some low end and some high end. So it doesn't really matter if you boost or cut, it just matters that you get to the sound as quickly as makes sense to you. So don't worry too much about boost or cut. A lot of people say cut before you boost. Sure. I don't know, I don't care. Just use your ears, use your judgment, follow your instincts, and that's gonna get you a better mix faster, and that's what it's all about. Okay, if you don't already have my six step checklist to a pro mix, it has that EQ cheat sheet in it. It's completely free from link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. If this video was helpful, be sure to let me know down in the comments which one of these was most eye-opening to you. Okay, see you next week in another video. One, two, three.